good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me, Nan. Um, you always give me these good jobs, so thank you. So agriman has been around a long time, right? <laughs> we today manage a lot of organic waste for about 100 communities throughout Southern California and growing pretty rapidly. And whether you believe in climate change or not, global warming, the weather is changing. And one of the things that challenges our agricultural partners is unpredictable weather creates unpredictable harvests. So we are moving through legislation at the state of California, which I'm gonna share with you today. We are trying to go from big oil to the soil. We all enjoy coal, oil, gasoline, electricity, and all those great things that have allowed this country to grow to its greatness today. But there's a responsibility on the other side as we produce carbon emissions into the atmosphere is to find ways to put it back. Well, that turns out to be my job. So we have basically over the last 25 years, and it's taken that long to actually figure out we are a climate change solutions company. And we do that through managing organic waste and diverting it from landfills where it doesn't belong and putting it back in the soil to sequester the carbon. So I'm gonna show you how we do that today and why we can't do it without our agricultural partners. Agriculture has been innovative for centuries. Farmers are the threat of this country and they will continue to be. They're also gonna be at the end of the day our saviors in helping us defeat climate change and global warming. So Agriman's been around for 45 years. I've been on board for the last 25 years. It was a small company in Camarillo that made all of its product from virgin materials. In about 1991, the city, actually in 1993, the city of Ventura and the Harrisons were the first green waste program that we embarked on. In everybody's green waste barrel, we had to figure out what to do with it. So initially in the early 90s, we were processing all of our wood waste and sending it to the biomass plants in the Central Valley where they burned it and created electricity. So that was our, our first days of creating renewable energy. Little did we know technology would advance very rapidly and find other ways to convert this valuable resource into a renewable. Uh, last year, we um, diverted over 560,000 tons of organic waste for over 100 cities in Southern California. And we do that, like I said, with our agricultural strategic partners. To date, we're actually over six million tons of organic waste recycled. Everybody's barrel typically weighs about 100 pounds, so you can only imagine how many barrels six million tons makes. It's a lot of material. And it doesn't seem to stop coming when we just got to enjoy 20 inches of rain this year, so that's been good for business. It wasn't, it wasn't good when it was raining, but it's good today. Um, we do this through innovation, science and technology. We see everything through a periodic table. So because we're chasing carbon, everything around us can be a plant nutrient, but it has to either be turned back into a gas or a liquid or a granular form to put back in the ground. And at the end of the day, it breeds new life. What's driving it today? Legislation. California has decided in 2006 to be a leader in combating global warming. They started with Assembly Bill 32. And actually prior to that, Assembly Bill 939 that required us to divert 50% of all of our waste from landfills, not knowing that organics made up 40% of that 50%. So in 2006, when Governor Schwarzenegger passed the climate change bill to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, we we're required to reduce them back to 1990 levels by 2020. And we are going to be on track to do that. They have backed that up with a new bill last year called SB 32, and I'm gonna show you how that works in a minute. And that tells us now we gotta reduce it by 40% by the year 2030. And it has turned out that waste is a driving force to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So that's why recycling is so important. In 2014, the legislation passed a bunch more bills and they're up here. I'm just gonna tell you what they are and tell you why they impact what we're doing. One of them is called uh, 1594, Assembly Bill 1594, and that basically takes away diversion credit for the use of alternative daily cover at landfills. And what that meant was in order to meet AB 939, so cities and jurisdictions would not be penalized $10,000 a day for not meeting 50%, they use alternative daily cover to meet that because it made up 30% of the waste stream. That goes away in 2020. 
So if you're not composting this material and putting it back into the soil and you're using alternative daily cover, you're gonna be out of compliance January 1 of 2020. I can tell you Ventura County is in no threat of that. Everything we do for all the cities we serve goes back to the soil with our agricultural partners. But I can't say that about Los Angeles County or Orange County or San Diego County or the Inland Empire. They are all drunk on alternative daily cover and they're in trouble. That's why our company is expanding so rapidly in the south to find ways to divert this material from the landfills. The other bill that everybody might be a little bit familiar with is Assembly Bill 1826. It basically says we have to divert 50% of all of our food waste from the landfills. That's a bigger challenge because the food waste is in the trash and we have to figure out how to get it out and that's no easy task. Um, so we're relying, relying on technology to help us do that. Lastly, the bottom bill, SB 1383, basically says 75% of all organic waste needs to be taken out of the landfills by 2025. I've been doing this for 25 years, so now I'm afraid it's only eight, nine years away. It seems to go pretty fast, and we're not ready. We don't have enough infrastructure. We're working as diligently as we can with our waste hauling partners to figure out how to do this without landfilling. Here's the governor's strategy. He makes it pretty simple. He's got these five pillars that are his mission to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and they surround low carbon fuel standards, which companies like the Harrisons are already doing using CNG to fuel their trucks. The renewable portfolio standard, we're seeing a lot more solar come into play. The uh, LEEDS programs, more energy efficiency in buildings, new ones and uh, existing ones. These last two impact what Agriman does. It's called the short-lived climate pollutants and diverting uh, organics from landfills because it produces methane. 25% of all the methane that comes from landfills, they can't capture. And methane's 80 times more potent than CO2. So therefore, if we divert the organics, we won't have that emission. Lastly, to solve all this, is we have to put all this organic matter back in the soil. So we created an initiative called the Healthy Soils Initiative, which is gonna require agriculture to put organic matter back in the soil. This is a chart of the volume of material that has to be diverted. Like I told you, Agriman's one of the largest of 500 plus thousand tons a year of organic matter. Well, we have two and a half years to divert almost six million tons to meet the 1826 bill. That's gonna be a monumental task. And almost impossible because if you've ever tried to build anything in Ventura County, you can imagine it takes a long time. So there kind of isn't any urgency to build infrastructure to manage this. We've been working on a permit to build a compost center in Ventura County for six years with our friends at CESPI Engineering, who CESPI Consulting, that have helped us. And it's probably going to be another six years. Here's kind of the food hierarchy. We don't want to produce it first would be the smartest thing. And then if we're going to have food waste, we want to feed hungry people with it next. And then if we're not going to feed hungry people, we want to feed animals. And then finally, we want to use technologies like anaerobic digesters, gasification plants. We'd like to make some energy out of it. And ultimately, we're going to compost it and we're going to put it back in the soil. That would be a closed loop system for us. Here's how we do it. On the left side of the screen, you have a green, big green box. We get lots of different types of organic waste from municipalities, from agriculture, from the forestry from wastewater treatment plants, uh, food waste, green waste, wood waste, lemon waste, you name it, lots of waste. They all have their own little constituents to it. It's our job to figure out what's in it. And then we have to figure out what we're gonna make out of it. Whether we're gonna try and make some energy out of it first. Ultimately, what are we gonna mix it with? We have to be these kind of chefs to decide what we're gonna make. And then at the end of the day on the right side, Agriman makes over 200 and growing different kinds of eco-friendly soil products. I'm going to show you some of the examples of how we do it. But trust me, it's one big science project. Every piece of soil has its own fingerprint. We have to test it. We have to see what's in it. We have to see why it's deficient. And then ultimately, what does the farmer want to grow? Because every plant is different, like every animal and every person. And we have to figure out what the nutrients are required to grow that crop. Here's some of the technologies. Technology is advancing very rapidly. As more and more people and manufacturers realize that this isn't going away in California, love what Bruce had to say earlier about California versus Texas, this is why. Innovation. 
There are more creative, innovative people in California than probably anywhere else in the country, probably the world. That's why we have the Silicon Valley and the medical and the bio, and now we're talking about soil. We have more scientists jumping on board trying to figure out how to put all this material back in the soil. These are depackaging machines. So we'd like to say when we get our food waste, it's perfectly clean. It, it's not. Uh, it comes in the trash, and it's got bags and bottles and cans and jugs and you name it. So these fancy little machines here kind of separate them. They're like a big smoothie machine. They chop all the stuff out. They squirt out the food waste one side and the trash out the other, and then now we at least have a clean material. We can decide what to do with it. This is uh, composting technologies. It used to be really easy. We used to have these uh, windrow compost turners. We'd run over the material, take about 45 days to do it. Voila, we had a really nice, rich soil product we could mix into all of our other products. Compost for us is like flour to a cake mix. Today, we have to use advanced technologies. Regulation basically says we can't create any emissions. We can't create any odors, no ammonia releases. So we're having to use these covered aerated static piles, basically pulling air into the piles and into a biofilter control emissions. Not a bad thing. And then in more dense areas, a project up at Davis Street to serve the city of Oakland has this technology to the left, which is going to be inside a building. So who would have thought we'd be composting inside a building in the middle of town and create no odors? But it does work, and it will happen. Anaerobic digestion. We have one of these fancy little tools here. It's been sitting on our property since 2013. Uninstalled. Still waiting on a permit. Low carbon fuels. One trash truck of food waste can actually fuel four trash trucks with renewable natural gas. Renewable natural gas through an anaerobic digester is carbon negative fuel. So when you look at diesel as being 102 carbon intense, CNG being 75%, you move all the way to the right. If we put our food waste in a digester, put it back in the truck, we're actually sucking CO2 out of the atmosphere. Electricity, we still provide the biomass plants with a lot of biomass fuel to create electricity, so it's carbon neutral. Gasification plants, we're looking at this technology to create a product called biochar. Biochar looks like a honeycomb under a microscope, and it's really just wood baked in an oven, and it creates this char material, and a sugar cube size of this material has the same surface area as an entire football field. So you think about what you can store in this material. Water, nutrients, fertilizer, holds them in place, less leaching, less water requirements. This product today that we created reduces water consumption in golf courses by 40%, and it's natural all organic, and it came from the waste stream. Just to line up some of our products, you can go to our website. Here are some of our customers. We serve the big strawberry growers. They are constantly farming the ground and need supplements all the time, so we use our products to amend soils for them. Avocado growers, we've done a lot of research with them in fighting root rot and being able to plant trees in the same spot. Lemon growers, probably one of our biggest farming partners, Limonera. We manage about six cities' organic waste streams with this one ranch. We've reduced their water consumption by 30%. We've reduced their pesticide use, their herbicide use, their fertilizer use. Not only did it create an economic value for them, but it created a sustainability story for them that they sell to their customers today. And Harold Edwards told me just yesterday, or Tuesday it was, one more penny a lemon is $5 million to the bottom line. And that's because they're doing the right thing. So you can do good and do well all at the same time. Nurseries, we make substrates for the nursery industry. We do a lot of high-profile uh, landscape projects. We're providing amendments to a lot of high-profile projects. We provide products to all the hotels, especially in Vegas, golf courses, rooftops, big retail program. We do a lot of um, co-packaging for retailers. This is the coolest project we're working on today called carbon farming. So again, without farming, we couldn't put the carbon back in the soil. Carbon farming is now an opportunity through voluntary cap and trade with a bank in Vancouver called Nature Bank, where we are gonna actually try to sequester carbon within Ventura County through the rangelands um, and um, be able to prove that we can hold it in place. Carbon farming actually creates value for the land, increases growth for cattle feed, and actually pulls more carbon out of the atmosphere through the grass back into the soil. 
That's my story. Thank you.